All right, here we have a Field of Glory 2 Digital League match. It is Season 8. This is the Biblical section, Division A. Uh, I have the Hebrew with Phoenician Allies Army. Um, this was not any of my four choices. Those were all snatched up by other players, and I had to choose a fifth army. So I'm going to proceed to blame all of my subsequent losses on that. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll see. It might be an okay army. Um, I have my doubts. Uh, I'm facing Thracians with the Greek allies. I actually did use the Thracians a couple of seasons ago. Um, I think I went four wins, one draw, four losses, or something like that. Pretty standard. Um, I did not really like the Thracian army, but I was not intelligent enough to add Greek allies. Uh, the main beef I had with it was that it, all its infantry were medium foot, and so chain routes were a thing, uh, especially facing armies with masses of hoplites. Uh, luckily for my opponent, I do not have masses of hoplites. I only have a few of them. And the majority of my infantry are light spear swordsmen, which would be at 50 POA in melee against his offensive spears. Um, so the Thracian army has a lot of options. Could field up to 17 units of skirmishers, although I don't think we'll see that many. Um, and a pretty substantial hoplite line, supported by Thracian spearmen. Uh, these are Average protected offensive spearmen, for those of you more familiar with the classical era of the game, they are effectively identical to Thuriophoroi, uh, those medium foot spearmen used by the Hellenistic states. Uh, in terms of cavalry, he does not actually have very much non light, although he can get masses of light cavalry, which could be very annoying. So I'm going to have to guess, basically, uh, what he's going to field. Like all really good um, players, he's chosen an army for the league that he could go all in on heavy infantry. He could invest in skirmishers. He could spam medium foot. And I don't know what he's going to do. Um, as to my own army, my cavalry wing is... Okay, um, the best part of it are its heavy chariots, which honestly I kind of prefer using in the center of the line as shock troops. I can get some offensive spearmen, but nothing like the quantity he has. My Phoenician spearmen cost 42, the same as citizen hoplites, but they are below average. They are costed that way because they happen to be maneuverable at least. Um, to be honest, I don't generally care about maneuverability in hoplites. I kind of want something that can just stand in the middle of the line and slug it out. Um, we can get a very strong skirmisher wing, and I think we will get a very strong skirmisher wing. I have not decided how strong. In terms of terrain, my opponent has effectively an unassailable defensive position. Um, if he deploys on it and refuses to move, it's going to be a draw without, you know, a single casualty because this cannot be assaulted. Um, so instead, we will offer battle in the plane and we will deploy our medium foot in here. One thing that's important to note is that although his Thracian spearmen are medium foot, uh, equivalent to Thuriophoroi, uh, medium foot only negate half of swords from POA if they are not disordered. So his Thracian foot fighting swordsmen in the forest would actually be on even terms. So we're certainly going to dump some more swordsmen in there. I'm going to cut the video until deployment because I'm going to spend a lot of time agonizing over this. So I'll get back to you in a second. Okay. So what we have opted for is a lot of skirmishers, as you can see. Um, the chariots have bows, or at least most of my chariots have bows. And being shock troops, if they are charged by infantry, 
uh, should have a substantial POA advantage and have a good chance of causing cohesion drop. So there I deployed one square in front of my not so great infantry line. I have swordsmen filling the woods and archers supporting. If I need to, I can shift troops over into this forest. Uh, let's see how my opponent deployed. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 units of skirmishers that I can count. To my 15. So that's good. It means we didn't go too overboard spending points on lights. It looks like the core of his points are sunk into this massive line of hoplites. Um, yeah, that's a problem. So these chariots will probably need to move to this flank as I doubt that I'm going to find an opportunity to easily arc them around, avoid this rough ground, and hit anything over here. But we have a little bit of time, and we shouldn't be forced to move so much by light superiority. Um, so we're outnumbered by one medium foot unit here. That's okay. We have good life support. We have these camels. They could intervene with their bows. Um, I'm not too worried about this. My main concern is this wall of shields and spears. Uh, but like I said, there is no point even trying to attack this hill. And I think my opponent knows that I'm not going to try to do that. Um, yeah, so we'll see how this develops. All right. <laughs> you forgot to move, he says. Well, let's see if he remembers to move. Excellent. Maybe we will have a battle then. Non light -like cavalry heading for this flank, so we might want to keep these chariots back here after all. Now, do I want to continue to not move? Ah, uh, probably not. Good enough. Next turn. So probably at least three non-light cavalry units back here. So not too much for us to do. I might um, at least conceal our archers a little bit. I mean, they'll probably get noticed. It's no big deal. Um, and just wait for him to get a little bit closer. Once these spearmen enter the wood, we can fight them. 
until then, it's not advisable. And next turn. I do dislike having to adopt a fundamentally defensive position where, you know, my chariots are at a massive POA advantage if he charges them with Hoplites, but why would he do that? Uh, the only reason why he would do that would be if you were forced to by superior firepower, which I probably have, but it's no guaranteed thing. Furthermore, he could accept the loss of his skirmishers in exchange for concentrating fire in the chariots and disrupting them, so that he could push them out of the way to hit my squishier and medium foot. Not sure what I would do about that if he adopted that strategy. Right, but for now, I don't think we actually have to do anything and next turn. There we go. Lights make contact. I'm sure he is completely unsurprised by their presence in the forest. Now it's unfortunate that I'm giving him time to dress his line, and yet I don't really want the fight to push beyond this wood of where his spearman could trash my medium foot swordsman. Okay, we'll just accept the pointless duel at the moment. I could charge and they would probably evade and I might catch them in the rear, but even if I do so, I'm not sure if it would do me much good. Well, we will reveal at least one unit of Phoenician foot. He already knows about this unit, so we'll chuck him in there. If it's only the two, I might want to start being aggressive here. I am still undecided on whether this cherry needs to push out or shift back. Decide that at the end of the turn. 
inch forward a little bit. I'm even willing to accept taking the first volley. Let's make his advance a little bit less unhurried. Not sure if this is a mistake, we'll find out. to decide to not decide, which could be a mistake, but we're going to sit there for one more turn with that unit. And next turn. Okay, it looks like it might just be the two units for cavalry support. Neither unit is particularly impressive. Ah, and the skirmishing begins. Yeah, too bad. All right, he noticed that these chariots are only light spear, so he might be able to get away with harassing them with javelin men. We will, in response, fall back. Moving means that my men lose their stationary shooting bonus, but he also would as well. Okay, we'll gradually sort of extend the skirmishing. So he has seven more units of skirmishers to engage. I only have five, but I also have three units of bow-armed heavy chariots, which good enough. I kind of screwed this up. Um, these light archers will try to evade if charged, and then they will be broken. There's not much I can do about it, I think. Well, we can run over here, and that's about it. Um, I'm perhaps not putting these units to the use that I should be. could push out with my camels and chariots. In fact, this is a turn I need to decide whether these chariots finally turn around this way or try to arc around this way. I think we turn them around. Leave the commander in this area. I think we'll take a 
unit of archers with them as well. They might arrive too late, but I just don't feel like a push this way is going to do anything in time, and I'm more worried about a break through the center with all these armored hoplites. Um, so we'll keep it there. On one hand, this would reveal my unit. On the other hand, he has to know that I had four units in here. So we'll just do it. Okay, onward. Next turn. Interesting. Yes, that is what I was afraid of. Okay. Let's try to get him to move into the forest. Again, that doesn't give me any great advantage, it just puts us on even terms with the spearmen. Chariots can always come back, it's just that uh, I don't want to get disrupted before contact. Position is certainly awkward, and without the chariots my skirmishes are outnumbered. So they might need to come in again and risk some hits. Right, 
right. Okay. Next turn. All right. Oh, we now have a glorious 3% lead. Moving up to 5. course nothing really matters until we see if this line can hold steady it's a tall order Okay. Once again, try to goad him into moving into the forest. Well, that's something. Okay, so we've inflicted enough damage that I think we're unlikely to get uh, drops in our chariots, or at least more than one. Very good.
think there's little else we can do other than wait. Yes. Okay, next turn. Ah, excellent. They've entered the forest. Disruption doesn't really matter that much, but... Uh, I say that, and yet I feel anxious when it happens to my men, even in the forest. Yeah, he knows the key is disrupting these chariots, or at least it would benefit him greatly to do so. Oh, okay, good, I thought he was going to make it pass for a moment there. That's rather unfortunate. Really did want to avoid fighting his spearmen with my swordsmen as much as possible. It's all very confusing. Let's get in there. Yeah, so that's how bad it is. I mean, my Hebrew foot are six points cheaper, but it's not good. Now he's also forced me into an awkward situation with this unit of general depuration spearmen. If I charge them with my armored hoplites, that's all well and good, but then the flank is exposed, which yes, is cut off by these chariots, but if I turn to face this unit, this unit could charge, force the chariots to fall back, even after a bad impact, and then he could flank charge my men and get the automatic cohesion drop. So I could face forward, with my hoplites, or I could bring my inferior Phoenician spearmen and non spear armed Giborum forward. Both are not good choices. Make as many easy decisions as I can first. If I do this, I will destroy the light javelin men, but if he countercharges with the spearmen and doesn't drop cohesion, then he would tear my chariots apart as they would have no way to fall back. keep up with the easy choice at the moment. I think I'm just going to... Ah, it's a tough choice. You know what? We're going to gamble a bit. Well, that was underwhelming. <laughs> Alright then.
unfortunately, I think I am forced to advance in the central part to avoid disruptions to my chariots. I think we take the risk. Thanks to uh, superior quality, we're on even terms. Of course, we're paying quite a few more points for these Givorium. The same dilemma still applies. If he withdraws this Slinger unit, charges with these Citizen Hoplites into the Chariots, then he can flank charge these Armored Hoplites. So I think instead we accept the loss of this unit of Hebrew foot and push with our own hoplites. Although maybe not too far considering that these could move into flanking positions quite easily. In fact, uh, that may have been a mistake. We'll plug the gap with these chariots and continue to get our own lights hopefully somewhere useful. I'm regretting moving these guys over here. Guess they'll do that. This unit can hold for just a little while. Ugh. Well, we can only hope that they don't break right away. satisfied but that is standard for me in any competitive game certainly far too close to call any predictions yet next turn what is in store for us Ouch. Ouch. Uh, of course. Well, hopefully they go far away. takes a risk, and it works, so I've lost my right wing. I mean, not yet, but probably in a few turns it'll all be over for this unit of chariots. He took advantage of the way I faced them, so that they couldn't fall back, but then he disrupted, so it worked out. My Phoenician spearmen are disadvantaged slightly, due to being below average. So they could survive that fight, but... Probably not without assistance. Okay, so that's unfortunate, but it's not the end of the world. We can keep holding out, and he'll have to pursue into the forest, which is useful. out to survive that.
Damn, they're not gonna keep pursuing. Okay, that's unfortunate. I'm now officially regretting pulling so many lights off of this flank. general up here because to attack will be to invite getting out flanked. So hoping to catch them. Chariots are going to keep suffering losses. Since they're disrupted, they'll run back to the other flank. Um, this unit will get ready for a collapse on this flank. Let's try to force this unit to break and see if we can cause any cohesion checks. Good. Good enough that I'll throw my Gaborim in. Mm -hmm. Wish I had some reserves here, but I just don't. Move these slingers up to counter these archers. Oh! Well, that helps a little bit. They're still screwed, but... Actually, that means that they should be able to fall back after losing... I'm not sure if it's the next combat or two combats, but it gives them a chance. And they can hide under the cover of this superior unit. So that might actually work out. Okay, I need to make a decision here, and I think my decision is to assist in this engagement. Gives us some advantage. Hmm. This unit is not going to do well, but it keeps surviving, so really all I can ask of them. I'm going to do something a little bit dangerous. This is bad we are disordered and they are not, but now we disrupt them. We hold firm, but this unlocks our swordsman POA to 100. Lock this unit in place and debating whether I want to lock this unit in place. I don't think that's necessary. They move here. Ah. If they move here, then I wouldn't really be able to do anything about them flank attacking this unit next turn because these Venetian foot are unmaneuverable. So I could move here in preparation, or I could support this unit. Well, let's see if that support is needed. It's not. So we move here. Very good. This flank is looking precarious. I was hoping to win on this flank, and now it looks like my goal is going to be to lose more slowly on this flank. Not exactly what I had in mind. Right, and all you can do is just stand there. Okay, it's dead even. Um, I have neither good feelings nor bad feelings yet. 
Next turn, losing that general hurt, he said. A sad face for him, but I think it'll be a smiley face for me. But let's see how much it actually matters. Yep, that makes sense. That's a bit ugly. <laughs> Run away. Ooh, don't get caught. Oh no. I might need Ugh, this this whole situation might get very bad. general is he talking about? Do you do us a favor of dying? No, not you. Then who? Ouch. Did I miss something? I clearly missed something. Was there a general there? <laughs> I'm sure this will all look very dumb when the whole record is put together into one video. It's just difficult because I'm often recording, you know, a day later. I have no idea what I said. Guess we'll find out later. Firm, too bad. Ooh. Oh, I should not. Oh, no, that was a mistake. <laughs> a lot of those happening here. Oh, we're going to lose this. We're going to have to just charge so they get out of the way. What a waste. All right. Well, that's no good. starting to get stressed out. Good. Lock them in then. I really... This is very lucky, this whole situation. Okay. At the cost of losing some lights, we're gonna try to disrupt this Greek cavalry. Excellent. Oh, what a shame that we're gonna get fragged. Well, I don't know what his sad face was about. My face is feeling pretty sad right now. I don't know about this. Alright. Next turn. Okay. 
Alright then. Not that any of that was super vital. Oh! Oh, that is... that is vital. If I had only disrupted them, I would have shredded them, but now... Yeah, that's to be expected. Ah, I was really hoping for something more out of all that. Okay, now I'm feeling pessimistic. <laughs> and I think I've earned it. Last chance, we're gonna be on low ammo now. Oh good. Maybe we'll have time to do something with that. Just to guarantee disaster on this flank. You have to charge. But it does any good, but we just needed to stop being under fire for one turn at least. need some disruptions. It's just not happening. Low on ammo now. Now I think I am losing. Yeah, I, I used the Thracians a couple seasons ago, and I really did not particularly enjoy using their massed uh, medium foot against hoplites, but the Greek ally is a really good idea, because now he doesn't have that weakness. Um, and he's got all spearmen against swordsmen. And it's, uh, I mean, technically I'm up three, but mm, I'm going to make my usual pessimistic prediction. At this point, with 12 turns to go and only a 3% difference, I'm going to officially guess 
but I will lose this one. All right, a nice little compliment from Harvey, although I feel like it kind of implies that I am going to lose. <laughs> Maybe I'm just reading into it too much. Oh, not another one. I mean, it wasn't a great matchup, admittedly. No, I think my pessimism is warranted at this point. It's not that being down six is a big deal, it's that I don't see where I'm going to catch up is the problem. I don't know that that will help anyway against Spearman head on. I forgot that the early Arab camelry get no swordsmen. Yeah, can't do much against offensive spearmen. The light spear at least gives us even impact, but unless we force a disruption, it really doesn't matter. Well, that's certainly worth a try. Hoping for a disruption. Alright, see if something happens. Nope. Then goodbye. Yep. This is a loss. Certainly there's no coming back at this point. I mean, I'll still get some more damage in, but... I don't think very much more. I just... I could not counter those hoplites. I mean, it didn't help that my swordsman can't really fight well against the Thracians either, but... And my Giborim never really got a chance to disrupt the enemy on impact, and thus unlock swordsmen. Chariots are low on ammo, so they need more time to cause auto breaks. And they don't really have that time. I hope for a disruption here. That helps. a little too late, but it at least prevents this unit from getting steamrolled. Yeah, ouch. Well done to Harvey. I, you know, I had a 
pretty alright defensive position, but he's just blasting through with his heavy infantry. Onward. Next turn. Can watch our true collapse begin this turn, I think. It's starting to turn down 9. I'm guessing we'll be down about 18 by the end of the turn. Oh, there's 20, so that's already short. Well, I guessed 18, and we're at 17. So at least something good came out of it. Unfortunately, I don't think they will hold for even one more turn. I could turn around. Let's do that. Maybe we can get a rear charge. Frag, that's good. There's no rescuing this battle, unfortunately. None of these troops can charge, really. So that's all we can do. We've closed it to 15 by the end of our turn. So we're going to continue to see a widening gap. Uh, yeah, I, I don't feel too bad. Uh, I did my best. And, you know, I'm not sure that I really could have had a much better plan. Um, maybe I could have had my swordsmen lining back at these forests instead of inside them. Um, not sure. Onward. Next turn, the slaughter continues. I have a... I know it's permitted, but I have this a personal rule that I do not surrender digital league games. I generally don't surrender anyway, but I'll occasionally ask if it's a complete wipeout, but definitely not league games. Um, partially I just want to see, like, exactly how much damage I can do going down and also you know I work so hard well 
for me to not work. I guess I play so hard for my wins that it feels unfair to, you know, rob someone of the satisfaction of slaughtering the rest of my army. Which is what is happening here. Well, that's kind of helpful. I guess now these two units will just stare at each other until somebody can get behind the chariots. Oh, we are going to take full advantage. Even though we're going to get outflanked, um, doesn't matter. Good. Disrupt? No. What about now? No. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's kind of amazing that they're still there at all. Oh, that's right and terrible. I forgot that the uh, Phoenician foot were considered undisciplined and could pursue. There's no time to lose. See them off at least. Excellent. Good, we at least got him over 30 before our loss, so can't feel too bad. It's also, you know, difficult to feel bad when you lose to such a finely conducted assault. Resolve this. Very good. All right, slaughter continues. Goodbye and goodbye. And goodbye. Yeah, it's bound to happen. That's what you get for charging out of the forest. Now they're going to get flanked. Uh, well, my first completed biblical game is a defeat. It's a bad omen.
Maybe you can slay their commander. It's possible. Yeah. Uh, Ah, oh, there goes our last chance. I mean, not our last chance to, like, win or anything like that. Okay, it continues. Next turn. Ah, there we go. One more break, at least. <laughs> I think that's going to do a lot of good guys. The people over here, they're the smart ones. Well, it's all over now. Wonder. Do it. <laughs> yeah, that's it's small things in life. The very small things. Okay, um, next turn it should be done. All right, next turn. Should be the last one. I mean, 36% casualties inflicted on the enemy is not a total walkover, uh, but it's definitely a decisive loss. We're going to have more than a 25% gap, so... So 
So yeah, well, well done to Harvey. I mean, um, I know I've said before that I didn't have a very good counter to his hoplites in the form of my swordsman, but I also want to make sure to emphasize that while that is true, he was only able to take advantage of that by really skilled use of skirmishers, forcing my chariots into unfavorable positions to sort of break up my line, line so that his hoplites could actually get in and make contact. Yeah, so there we have it. Um, I do wonder now if I should have waited this more, or maybe if I should have, I mean, it would have been still more cowardly, but uh, formed up between these two forests so I could use more of this rough and a little bit of this rough and shorten my line, or a shortened section of my line that needed heavy infantry and plunk a unit of mediums in this built up area. Uh, that would have been stronger, but I did genuinely think I had a chance fighting here, so, you know, that is what it is. Uh, good game, and well played to Harvey.